After stating the hypotheses, the researcher will design the study and select the correct statistical test to carry out. The statistical test will use data that is collected from a random sample, and it will allow the researcher to make a decision about whether the null hypothesis should be rejected or not rejected. Now, it's very important to understand that a hypothesis test is not proving anything. We are not going to be able to determine whether a claim is for sure true or false. What we will be able to do, however, is look at the evidence we gather from the sample, and based off of that evidence, we'll make a decision about whether we reject or do not reject the claim. That's it. Absolutely nothing is being proved. In fact, the only way to prove something about a population would be to use the entire population in the study, which is almost always unrealistic, especially when a population is large. Now, there are four possible outcomes for a hypothesis test. Since the null hypothesis may or may not be true, and a decision is made to reject or to not reject it. And these four outcomes are shown over here in the figure to the right. And in almost every single statistics textbook, you'll see this courtroom analogy to help you understand or to help illustrate um, the four possible outcomes. So basically you have a defendant on trial and the null hypothesis is that the defendant is innocent and the alternative is that they are not innocent or in other words, guilty. So what happens? Well, the prosecutor will present the evidence in the court and based on that evidence, the jury will decide um, to either convict or acquit the defendant. So let's just run through the possible outcomes here. So your first outcome is that the defendant is innocent and the jury decides to convict them. So obviously that would be an incorrect decision and that can happen and that's what we call a type 1 error. So down at the bottom you can see that a type 1 error occurs if you reject the null hypothesis when it is true. Okay, a second thing that can happen is that the defendant is not innocent, so in other words they're guilty, and the jury decides to convict them. So we would say that was a correct decision. Okay, the third outcome is that the defendant is innocent and the, and the jury decides to acquit them. So they're innocent, they get acquitted, that would be a correct decision. And then the fourth outcome is that the defendant is guilty and they are acquitted. So I think we'd all agree that is not a correct decision and that's an example of a type 2 error. So a type 2 error occurs if you do not reject the null hypothesis when it is false.